Welcome everyone to the latest hot and cold list. This is the weekly list where we tell you what's hot and what's cold in the comic community. I have my co-host with me, Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo. What's going on, buddy? No, not a whole lot, Brian. Excited to be here, checking out what's hot and what's cold. Right. So, as always, we're going to show you contributors that make up the list. Right, Jack? Absolutely. We have a guest contributor this week, and that is Michael Carls from the Downright Nerdy Podcast. If you guys like pop culture, like movies, like comic books, like pretty much everything geek, definitely check out the Downright Nerdy Podcast on YouTube. They are also available on iTunes and Stitcher, so definitely check them out. Really looking forward to his pick tonight. So we're not going to keep you guys in suspense. We're going to run right into the hot picks this week, starting with Peter Rana's pick. What's up, everybody? I moved out of my son's room this week into my spare bedroom, which I've kind of made my own little uh, comic storage area. You can see one of my filing cabinets there in the background. But anyway, what's hot this week? For me, it would have to be a series that people have been recommending to me for ages now, and I've just never got around to reading it. But uh, last week I got a good deal in the whole run, and I've gotten through the first arc so far, and I'd have to say Fear Agent. This could be part of the option for Dark Horse. It could not be. I don't care. I hope somebody options it, because this really be, needs to be adapted into something, because it is just awesome. I can't believe it took me this long. So I would say, what's hot? Fear Agent. So Jack, Peter's hot pick for this week is Fear Agent from Dark Horse. You know, Fear Agent's one that I'm not like incredibly familiar with. I haven't personally read it, but it's it's been kind of a hot and cold pick for speculators for some time. You're talking about a property that's been a lot, around for a long time. It's kind of bounced to a couple different publishers, being Dark Horse and Image. And um, it's been rumored for optioning for quite some time. So every time those rumors of optioning come, come around, you start to see the books pop on the secondary market. Now, we haven't seen anything concrete yet. Will we? We don't know. And in today's day and optioning, you can't put anything past it, especially in the world of indie comics. But um, I think that's where a lot of this talk from Peter comes from. And a lot of, Peter, like a lot of people, have really loved how this series played out uh, from a reader perspective. That is Peter Rinna's pick, and it's the number one item on the hot list this week. So next up, we have our resident indie spotlight writer, Andy Tomlin. And let's see what he has for us on the hot list. Hey, what's up, everyone? Andy here, Indie Spotlight Series, CBSI. What's hot this week in comics? Uh, seems like IDW right now uh, is, is really, really kind of on fire with their creative own properties. When you look at the basically the last three titles to release in Ghost Tree, um, Amber Blake, uh, now Road of Bones, they're, they're on to something, not just... Uh, they're great stories. Uh, they're catching heat on the secondary market, uh, so it's a win-win. Uh, a lot of these uh, look to be good options as far as media outlets uh, are concerned. So, don't know how long it'll stay that way, but uh, it's right now, week to week, IDW seems to be uh, bringing the noise on the uh, on the creator-owned property side. So, be aware. Like I say, don't know how long it'll last, but it's here now. I'm pretty sure I heard a pterodactyl in the background there, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways. It's all prehistoric South Carolina. <laughs> caca, caca. We had Andy with IDW. I like his pick, especially with some of the examples they gave. I have a red ghost tree, but Amber Blake's I've loved that so far. We just had a new issue come out today. And Rhoda Bones came out last week. Loved, loved, loved that issue. In fact, we even have a separate video about Rhoda Bones on this channel, right? We sure do. Right. So what did you think of Andy's pick? I love Andy's pick. IDW has long been known for more of their property-driven IP type of releases. Things like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, My Little Pony and G.I. Joe, Transformers and things of the like. But we've seen a streak going on in 2019, as Andy pointed out, of these creator-owned properties doing extremely well from IDW. Now, they've always released these books, but they haven't always gotten the traction on the secondary market. But they are on fire in 2019, and uh, we'll see how long that continues. But definitely be on the lookout for some of these creator-owned properties and those uh, 1 in 10 incentives. Uh, we talked about one right on this channel just last night with Canto coming with a 1 in 10 incentive on July 26th. And that's another creator-owned property to be on the lookout for. Right. 
definitely looking forward to Canto. Had a great conversation with David Boer and Drew Zucker. Great, great guys. The book is awesome, but I would pick it up regardless to, just to support guys that put that much of their heart and soul into creating such a great story. Yeah, definitely a labor of love. Yeah. So with that, IDW takes the second spot this week on our hot list. Moving on to the next hot pick this week, we have the Run the Table author, Clint Jocelyn. CBSI Nation, Clint Joslin here. Do run the table, your daily poll, a few other things. I wanted to come to you with this week's hot pick, and that is art and sketch commissions. Art and sketch commissions are very hot. I think part of the reason is is because people are looking at these are one of ones. They are unique, and they are one of those things that um, you're getting individualized. So I look at it as something that is continuing to be hot. You're seeing the sales grow warmer. And you're also seeing an uptake in people who are wanting to get these. For instance, if you have you know X amount of money to go to a con and dig in the bins and or look at the walls for slabs and things like that, you see more and more people going ahead and get commissions or sketches. Why? Again, like I said, they're one of ones and they are a lot more useful potentially down the road for ROI. So my week's this week's top pick is sketch and art commissions. Thanks. So there we have it, Jack. Clint's pick this week for the hot list is convention commissions and sketches i tend to agree with this pick partly because we are deep into convention season right now and you're seeing on instagram you're seeing all over social media a bunch of people posting the commissions and sketches that they've received and he makes a good point they're one of a kind right right and look from a collector's perspective they're cool and that's awesome but myself as a representative of cbsi i'm all about the speculation i'm all about the flip and something that I started to look at in the last year is the ability to flip these simple head sketches that a lot of artists do for less money than what the full-blown commissions cost. And uh, to break down the math like we like to do on the Bolo Show here on Thursdays on Civilman's Comics YouTube channel, um, I saw Adam Hughes at North Carolina Comic Con last year, and he charged $70 for a quick head sketch. And if you look on eBay, uh, a head sketch from Adam Hughes is going to go from 150 to $250, kind of at the minimum, is if he's doing some of those iconic characters that we've known him to do variant covers for. Um, they also had Spider-Gwen colorist Rico Renzi in the building who would color completely a head sketch for $30. So for $100, you could have a completely colored version. So you start to look at better margin on some of these sketch opportunities than you actually do from dinging the bins, at least at a short-term basis, a lot of times at cons. And now that's not the same for every artist, and it's not the same at every convention, and you gotta do your homework, but it's something I'm starting to look at. So I think Clint's pick is a very good pick. I think that there's an opportunity to make a lot of money in that field. Right. I will say part of a tip, if you're going to go to a convention, you know ahead of time where you're going to go, try to contact the artist early, as early as possible, and try to see if they're doing commissions, and then see if you can go ahead and get it done, rather than walking into the con and then saying, hey, will you do a commission for me? Because you're not going to get it right then. You might get a sketch, but a lot of times their schedule will fill up on those too, so get a hold of them early, right? Right, right. Especially if you're looking for a full-blown commission, you definitely need to get in touch with these guys beforehand. They're, they're, their schedules are getting too busy these days at conventions as comics get more and more popular. So you, that's why I've said, I said more of those quick head sketches are becoming more and more popular at conventions where an artist can do it in three minutes. So as simple as that may seem, it's surprising when you go and do the research what some of the sales can be, especially for your top-tier artists. Yeah. True. And with that, that'll give us the third spot on this week's hot list. Once again, it's important to note that there's no order of our hot and cold list. We just put what's hot, what's cold. They're not ranked in any way. So when I say third spot, that doesn't mean it's coming in at number three. But just want to make sure everyone's well aware of that. Rolling right along, our next contributor for our hot list this week is the Reading Pile author and our residential reading expert, Dan Piercy. Hey y'all, this is the Dango Warrior from dpiercyscomics.com, which forwards to my article, The Reading Pile on CBSI, and I'm coming at you with an intensity this week, pre-recorded from my comic book room. So, my hot pick this week is Batman White Knight number three, cover B. 
the sequel to Batman White Knight was announced last week for July 24th. And if you checked out the preview panels, they were pretty cool. So I expect there to be some interest in the back issues to the original series. And this is the book to have with the first Neo Joker. If you check completed sales, they're in the $15 to $25 range. That's my pick. I'm sticking to it. Hot pick. Batman White Knight, number three, cover B. And here's a little message for Brian Wood. Stop telling me what to do, Brian. Stop telling me what to do. The inside joke, y'all. See ya. So there we have Dan Piercy's pick, Jack. What did you think of this? Well, I like this pick. Um, now, Dan talked a lot about the Neo Joker, but I'm going to talk about the Batman, the White Knight series in general. Uh, Sean Murphy really hit a home run with this. It kind of went under the radar a little bit. It was talked about from a reader buzz angle. But being looked at as not in continuity, it kind of wasn't taken real serious. But you got to look at what's been going on. Again, follow the trend. See what's going on with Hollywood. We've seen both animated films be raised to another level, as well as the new Joker movie showing that kind of a different outside of continuity angle on a character can be shown within the DC universe. And that gives me hope that with this Batman White series, with how popular it is, with the fact that it's coming back for a second volume, that we could one day see some form of major media incarnation of this series. And I think the speculation on this series, several of the variants, uh, issue number one for sure, um, are very undervalued. And you know, you can look at eBay and see what prices are going for, but definitely be on the lookout when you're at conventions, um, when you're at LCSs. There's definitely some bills to be had on this series for sure. Right, and, and Sean Murphy did interiors and he, he did both cover A's and B's throughout the whole series, right? Right, right. And another thing to keep an eye out for is those l uh, later printings of those key issues. So issues like one and three, um, they, they went to like thirds and fourth prints. So keep an eye out for those because those can be a lot cheaper and more accessible. And again, you grab that low hanging fruit when you can because you can make good returns with that. Right. And that brings us to the next pick on the hot list this week. And it comes from our cover tunes author at comicbookinvest.com. And that's Mike Morello. How's it going, boys and girls? Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with this week's Hot Pick. And this week I'm going with all Atlas Seaboard Comics number ones. Uh, Atlas Comics was a company started in 74 by a bunch of guys that splintered off from their companies, decided to take the old Marvel name of Atlas and create a bunch of their own titles, which were largely swipes of existing things at the time. Um, and the great thing is that Paramount just picked up the entire catalog all titles um, for use in film and television. And so while we don't know which ones are going to end up getting greenlit or made at all, they're all really selling well right now. 50, 60, 70 copies a week off eBay, which is staggering. Um, now, my caution is for you to stay away from the low-grade beaters that have been sitting in dollar bins for, you know, 20 years. I mean, these are Bronze Age comics. They're old, and they've been sitting in those bins for ages. So do your best to try to find some high-grade copies as best you can. Um, my money is on the horror titles or the sword and sorcery titles um, just because I think there's gaps in the market for those right now so horror titles like Demon Hunter man that's just a dope cover I don't care if that gets made or not I'm keeping that it's so cool um, this one which is really popular Fright number one or Son of Dracula um, that's really popular and notice that these have some dark covers they're going to be tough to find in high grade but just do your best uh, Planet of Vampires is another one that's selling really well um, and then these two, which are pretty rare, Tales of Evil 2 and 3, The Bog Beast and The Man Monster, um, which could get made into some cool horror stuff as well. Um, or, if not the horror, then maybe the sword and sorcery slash barbarian stuff. I think with no Red Sonja and no Conan movie or film coming, since that stuff's been ta uh, tabled, I think there's potential to fill the market with these. Uh, like Iron Jaw and Wolf the Barbarian, both of which are also selling really, really well right now. Um, I would steer clear of the titles that have potential copyright issues, like Phoenix, for obvious reasons, because of the title, um, or The Grim Ghost, which is selling really well right now, but obviously it is a Ghost Rider Mephisto ripoff. And then the other one, which is Scorpion, which is also selling really well right now, but turned into Dominic Fortune later on. So I would steer clear of those. Go for the horror and the sword and sorcery titles as cheap as you can buy in, as high a grade as you can buy in. And that's my hot pick for the week. Thanks, guys.
I thought I heard a pterodactyl in Andy's video, and then watching Mike's video, I could have swore I saw an at at on his shoe, on the tongue of his shoe. It looked like a Star Wars at at, but. Atlas and number ones. No one might there probably was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Custom made. Ah, ah. Right. Screen worn. Yeah. So we have Atlas number one, specifically horror and fantasy. What do you think about that, Jack? There's no denying this pick. I mean, Atlas has been the talk of the market. Um, I have to shout out Topher and Jason from comicbookinvest.com who put together an incredible true first that I, I think is going to be really like a resource for speculators for some time. If you haven't checked it out, absolutely check it out. because It really delves into all of the first appearances in the Atlas universe. And I think Mike did a great job in his video breaking down which books to look at and which ones not to. Um, I feel him on the condition, but I have to say I'm I'm a I'm a low grade to mid grade fan. If you can find it at the right price, if you can find it out of those dollar bins, I think it, those are still safe plays because you're talking Bronze Age, and because you're talking black covers. Um, my big caution to speculators is to be careful because there's so many properties and we don't know where these movies are going to come from we don't know if they're going to like take pieces of this book and this book and this book and put it together and make a movie we're still assuming that we're going to get adaptations of individual books we really don't know anything yet about this deal so the prices that these books are starting to get to now start to scare me so if you can find them for like five dollars in very fine to near mint condition grab them if you can find them for a dollar in low grade condition Grab them. Um, I feel good about that because that's a, a, lo a low price lottery ticket I'm willing to take a risk on. But at the kind of the eBay values, I'd be very careful. So I think this the, the category of these books being considered hot, uh, I think uh, Mike is hit the nail on the head with what's going on with the industry right now. Definitely hot. Definitely once they word option gets put around the title, I mean, there's there's nowhere to go but hot at that point. Because <laughs> if you would have right. said like three months ago or so. Hey, you got any Atlas books? <laughs> like, yeah, take your pick. You skipped over these books when you were digging through dollar bins. There's, no, I mean, you know, it, they're cool covers for number ones that are older. Maybe you'd pick some of them up here and there. But, I mean, nobody was picking up stacks of any of these books for speculation purposes. So this really hit everybody out of left field. But it, it really goes to show what we have to be paying attention to in the hobby now because every Hollywood studio wants their own universe yep. so people are going to be looking and uh there's no there's no comic company that they from getting optioned yeah definitely like we say buy with caution don't stick your neck out because i have a feeling at some point maybe could be months down the road who knows but we will be seeing atlas on the cold list at some point i i think that's a safe prediction so next on the hot list this week, we have Topher S. Who busted out FOMO the puppet last week? Is he busting him out again this week? Let's take a look. What's up, everybody? It's the mass speculator with your hot pick of the week. I'm late for a clam bake, so it's going to be quick. This week, I'm going with Archie Chicks. That's right. Archie Chicks. It doesn't matter which one. Sabrina, Veronica, Vampironica. Hell, you could put Jughead in a two-piece and it would sell. Don't believe me? Get on the computer. Do the research. These books are hot because the chicks are hot. The Mask Speculator is back with a new mask this week, and he's talking Archie chicks, right? I think he's on to something here. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you just got to look at what's happening again with the Archie universe as a whole has been through a lot of changes over the last few years and has seen kind of a renaissance and they've changed some of the things about Archie that had made it successful but they've moved into Hollywood so we've seen Riverdale we've seen Sabrina be successful and we've seen this like horror move with them that, uh, that's really helped them take off but you know like a lot of things in comic books um, there's certain things that just are timeless and do well and covers with beautiful women on them tend to do very well and the Archie universe is filled with them so when you combine this kind of horror danger element with beautiful women, you tend to kind of have successful covers. Um, and but this is a, there's a history of this. Go back to some of the old risque covers um, from back in the kind of like 60s and 50s. Uh, there's a lot of back issue gold as it 
uh, pertains to different Archie back issues uh, dating back at this point now. What are we talking? 40, 50 years. Right. And then, like he said, also Sabrina covers have been still doing hot with the Netflix show. Um, there's even some copper and bronze Archie, just the covers. People like the covers because it's got, you know, Betty and Veronica and bathing suits and different. Can't go to too depth in here because we, <laughs> we don't want to make it sound like dirty old men, but. Right, but there was just one on the hot 10. There was just, I can't remember the issue number. It was one of those random issues that was just on the hot 10 because it blew up in price and uh nothing to it other than i think it was just betty in a bathing suit yeah. and it's just you know it's it's funny what pops in the market but there seems to be a market for these books they're not really printed uh in large quantity and because they're kids books they get kind of read and abused and they don't stand the test of time in mint condition yeah archie was my first introduction into comics really um double digests because parents wanted me to start reading something and at the cash register when you checked out from the grocery store at the time. So I was like, I'll try this. But one of my favorite, which isn't super high in value, but Fiona Staples did that Betty and Veronica variant with the, the mermaids. Um, yes. Love that cover. Every time I see it for cheap, I pick it up just because it's one of my favorite covers. Moving on into the hot list. Our next pick comes from Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. Mel V with Hot and Cold for this week. Um, my hot pick for this week haircut would be the Eternals number one Alcuna variant. Um, back in March, this book, this book was about a $17, $18 dollar book. It is steadily increasing right now, and now it's getting about 40 So if you find them, check them out. You got them, hold on to them. So Mel V's talking Eternals. He's also talking about the Alcuna variant. What do you think about this one, Jack? Right, well, we talked about Eternals on the show already, and I think that we're going to probably talk about Eternals several more times over the coming months. The MCU is king for speculation, and with talk of Eternals being that next big team, that next big property coming down the pike in MCU, I think people are going to be looking for more and more books to get into play. And we've already seen that first volume and all those first appearances pop on the secondary market. And now we're starting to see that bleed into some of the more modern volumes where there's variants featured. Um, and, you know, the whole new age speculator and the new age collector tends to be very variant driven and very art driven. And they want modern books to chase as well. And some of these early uh, Eternals uh, variants are starting to see some real play on the market, especially from that run where the Akuna variant uh, comes in. Right, and then you never know where the MCU goes because when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, people were first picking up the old Guardians books, and then once you realize it was actually like the 2008 series that there was kind of more focusing on, those books shot up like freaking through the roof. So now... You kind of have the same thing where people were buying up all the older Eternals books. And now, like you said, that's kind of segued over into the newer series, especially with that Acuna variant that Mel's talking about. Right. And the prices are priced still low enough where you can get in um, and take that chance. And again, worse comes to worse, you know, from an SEO perspective, when those movies come out, you know, everything Eternals is going to do well. Right. And... While recording this, we just got a new subscriber to the channel. So thank you to, to William for subscribing. So our last pick for the hot list this week comes from Mike Carls, our guest contributor for the week. Like we said, he's from Downright Nerdy Podcast. Definitely check him out on YouTube and his podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. But let's see what he has for us for the hot list this week. Hey, everybody. This is Michael Carls from the Downright Nerdy Podcast. And I just want to say thank you to Brian and AKA Mr. Bolo for, from Simple Man's Comics for letting me come on this show. Here's what I got for you. As we know, the Super Bowl of Comic-Cons, San Diego Comic-Con, is right around the corner just a couple months away. And with that come exclusives. So I'm going to give you a list of hot and cold exclusives that are coming to you this summer. So here's the hot ones. Diamond Select Toys. They are coming out with several figurines and action figures um and they have extremely great detail they actually even give sideshow a run for their money especially for those who can't afford the expensive three to one thousand dollar three hundred to one thousand dollar sideshow collectible figurines 
Um, here's some of the ones that are actually going to be that have been announced for San Diego Comic Con 2019. We got the Ghostbusters 19 with a uh, Ghostbusters action figure box set limited to 1,984 pieces. 1984 is when the movie came out, uh, going for 80 bucks. We got Captain Marvel, a 10 inch uh, scale or 10 inch figurine, uh, going for 50 bucks, limited to 4,000 pieces. We got the Deadpool. 10-inch uh, figurine. It's the uh, Deadpool Taco Truck X Force in gray. Uh, Fifty bucks, go ten thousand pieces. Got the X23 nine-inch figurine going for fifty bucks, limited to six thousand pieces. And we got the Deadpool one-half scale uh, going for one hundred and fifty, but it is limited to one thousand pieces. Now, if you guys have ever been to San, San Diego Comic Con, you know these are tough to get. So make sure you get on that list and try to get that ticket, or at least try to get somebody who get in with somebody who can who gets the ticket um NECA is coming out with uh two extremely awesome exclusives uh they're coming out with a pennywise it clown eight inches uh going for only 30 bucks and if, as you can see the detail on this pennywise clown is extremely extremely detailed um we also have a tmnt uh the capture of splinter going for 125 it's a box set with splinter uh, shredder and a couple of the foot clan um that's like i said it's going for 125 and lastly we have uh marvel is coming out with their own exclusive the of the infinity gauntlet going for only 20 bucks but the, here's a the caveat there's only 2500 pieces worldwide so if you could get your hands on one of these it'd be absolutely worth your while if you get especially if you get, get a couple and the last two things for my hot list i have daredevil number one here i know i said i didn't really want to talk too much about comic books because that's your guys' expertise but this has been an amazing series i've just been enjoying it i don't know what it's worth or anything like that but i just know that it's a great storyline and i cannot wait for the next issue to come out um and also my last hot list item the best t-shirt i own right now so there we have it our guest contributors pick mike carlos from downright nerdy podcast and he has san diego comic-con toy and statue exclusives I don't blame him. I think he's really right on this because every year those exclusives get announced. They got lottery tickets for them, and you could see some crazy prices on those. Don't you agree, Jack? Oh, yeah. It's insane. And I, I've watched a lot of blogs following a lot of other people who have gone to San Diego Comic-Con, and they've been able to pay for their trip just through the money be made on these toys from Mattel and Hasbro and Funko and the various statue companies. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And if you're a comic book collector, you have the ability to offset a lot of your cost just by being knowledgeable on what toys are going to be in demand. Because a lot of these are in such demand nationally that just getting access to them is going to make you immediate profit. Um, and then as far as the comic book series he mentioned, I have to say Daredevil is spot on. That's becoming one of the most buzzed about series. The buzz continues to grow on that one um, as we enter this week. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, issue number six dropped, starting a whole new storyline that's got a lot of anticipation. Be on the lookout for issue nine. That solicit sounds crazy. So I think you're going to, if you haven't jumped on that one yet, I think you want to jump on that one now. And uh, I love that CBSI swag, that uh, $10 Comic Cops t-shirt. Of course, that is uh, the best on the whole video. So that brings us to the end of the hot list portion of our list this week. And a huge thank you to Mike Carls once again for providing the guest contributor pick. Yes, definitely brought the heat. So now we're going to keep rolling right on into the cold part of this list, and we're going to start with Peter's pick. So, what's cold this week? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd have to say the main man, Lobo, is cold. He's about to appear on Krypton in like two weeks, and pictures have not been very flattering. And uh, I've had this up on eBay for quite some time and keep getting lowball offers. Last year, this time, this was a $250 plus book. It was reaching like $300. Now there's sales about $165, $175 just a couple of weeks ago. So prices are dropping on Lobo for whatever reason. Uh, they just got to do them right. So for right now, I mean, the main man is ice cold. So there we have Pete's pick. He's talking Lobo as cold. I tend to agree. What do you think, Jack? Well, I think this is a good pick. Um, he's definitely a bit cold. Now, I happen to be optimistic about Krypton. I think Krypton did a good job with season one, and I've liked a lot of the sci-fi shows. But even if he's awesome on Krypton, we, TV spec hasn't really pushed the market. But what TV spec has done is shown the validity of a character to possibly show up later on in movies. 
I think that Green Arrow has been, as a character, has been elevated by the TV show. And I think we've seen the same from The Flash and the sales of the comics, certainly evidence of that. Um, so I think that there's an opportunity there. But I think the key for what Peter's saying is that the book used to trade at a certain amount. People anticipated it to go up from that amount, and it's gone down. So there's a real buying opportunity here for Lobo because the reality is he's a popular character for 90s kids like me. And I think he's always going to be popular for people from a certain era and who are going to look for a real gritty big screen adaptation of Lobo. And I'm still hopeful we're going to get it at some point in the DC universe. Right. And I think part of that is, is it actually cold or has it come back down to earth because it skyrocketed up? What, three years ago, when a certain former wrestler turned actor was meeting with DC and everyone thought for sure he was going to be Lobo. Instead, he's Black Adam. And then we're talking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson, right? I mean, when there was that rumor there, those the freaking Lobo books started shooting up. Yeah, I think it's cold. I think it's come back down, but I don't think yeah. it's like sunk, sunk, like way below value. I think it's come back down to where it should be at the time. And I think the biggest problem is the DC universe itself, as far as DC movie universe, as far as the delays that they've had due to the, the lack of success from Batman vs. Superman and then Justice League. Um, you know, they were talking about a Lobo movie being in the works yep. and possibly talking about, I think it was 2020 was the first date we originally talked about for a Lobo movie. So uh, they've gotten totally off schedule with the lack of success from their early releases. And I think that's really slowed everything up. But... I think that's why, you know, the New Age speculator has been very down on DC Comics. You hear a lot of that anti-DC talk. But to me, there's just a ton of opportunity yeah. there uh, because I think they got to get it right. Warner Brothers has to figure out how to make these movies to the caliber of the MCU. And when they do, characters like Lobo, there's going to be profit in that. All right. And me personally, I kind of hope it keeps being cold because that way I can get me that Green Lantern Lobo variant for even cheaper because I still need one. <laughs> That's another great book that we be on the lookout for with the kind of depression and Lobo value. But So there we have Peter's pick. Next on the cold list this week, we have Mike Morello's pick. Hi again, everybody. Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with this week's cold pick. Um, anything Netflix Defenders related. With all of those shows getting canceled off of Netflix and no real home to speak of, those books have gotten really cold. However, the good news is these are still legitimate keys, and right now is a great time to buy them. If they're books that you've really wanted, they're really on the low side right now because uh, these characters don't really have anything going on with them, and prices have definitely either plateaued or gone down. Obviously, high-grade copies are always going to have a premium, but, I mean, books like uh, Alias, number one, first Jessica Jones, um, obviously, first Luke Cage... Uh, this is a really tough one to get in high grade, so right now might be your chance to get that high grade copy. Um, and, you know, first Iron Fist, uh, Marvel premiere number 15. Uh, Defenders, which I always thought was weird anyway, considering you know, none of the actual Netflix characters are in this. But um, those books were all really, really hot while those shows were doing well. And there's nothing wrong with the shows. The shows are great, but they're canceled now, and they may be going to Disney streaming. They may be going to... Uh, Hulu, it's possible, um, and they may pick up Steam again. So right now you're on this nice little uh, valley, right now of value, and I think that while they, are, while they are cold, now is the time to buy them if they are books that you've wanted for a long time. I'm still convinced that's an ad-ad. <laughs> I think he heard us at first was trying to hide it, and then he was like flashing it on us, like, yeah, check it out. And he's in a Star Wars room. He's got a big Star Wars poster behind him. I mean, he's like using the Force on his picks, but... Mike Morello's cold pick is the Marvel Netflix books. I have seen a decline in some of these books. What do you think about them, Jack? Yeah, I think this is a great pick. Um, but it's also another pick with opportunity for speculators. Obviously, with the news that the Netflix Marvel series is are done now, a lot of speculators have turned their attention elsewhere. And these books never really panned out the way people had hoped. Because, again, TV spec hasn't really panned out the way people would want it to. But... There is light at the end of the tunnel in two different possibilities. The first is that Hulu now is run by Disney and seems to be kind of the PG-13 R-rated streaming service that Disney's going to use to funnel product. And we could end up seeing these Netflix properties land on Hulu. The more intriguing possibility 
is will we see these characters show up in the MCU, even with different actors? I find it really hard to believe that we're going to get into a Shang-Chi movie franchise and we're not going to see Iron Fist. We're not going to see White Tiger. We're not going to see um, Daredevil. The, these are things that I just, I just don't see being the case. So, you know, with that in mind, I think that there's still so much spec value in these characters. And the Netflix shows proved that people had an interest in Jessica Jones and people had an interest in Luke Cage. So I, I think they would make excellent additions to future Avengers movies. Um, and I think with that in mind, that there's something to keep an eye out for as dealers start to feel like putting that Luke Cage back on their back wall is a little less sexy than it was two years ago. There's going to be opportunities for you to buy at a lower price than you could have grabbed it at two years ago. So be on the lookout for those. And I think it's a great pick by Mike because there's definitely depression in the market as far as value of these books, but probably not the importance of them. Right. So, yeah, like you said, it's cold, but it's a perfect opportunity, kind of like we mentioned with Lobo. Good opportunity to... to, to today junior to buy in on the, some of those books as well so our next pick for the cold list this week comes from the reading pile man himself dan piercy now my cold pick of the week i say with some reluctance it's a title i've enjoyed a lot others i've talked to seem to like it too it's doomsday clock it looks and feels a lot like the original watchman it has characters like the marionette who feels like a multiverse Harley Quinn. DC is teasing some kind of Superman death and or confrontation with Dr. Manhattan. But it was pointed out to me by the Comic Triple Threat on their Buyer Pass podcast that this title has been going on since 2017. We're on issue nine. There's three issues left, so they have been going on uh about a, a book a quarter and does dc care it has to be orchestrated i mean we're on their time baby <laughs> take it or leave it but you know that kind of schedule just kills the momentum of the book and it's a bummer because it's been a great read so that's my cold pick of the week doomsday clock see ya so there it is jack dan pierce's cold pick this week is doomsday clock great book but the schedule does tend to hinder you do have some complaints about it like we were talking about before uh new issue comes out you almost have to reread previous issues because it's been such a gap that you have to catch back up to speed again what do you think about his pick right and i i can't argue anything that dan says um i almost get defensive about the pick because i do love this doomsday clock series and i i really enjoy jeff john's writing and there was so much anticipation for the watchmen entering the dc universe i do feel like dc is kind of bungled how um they've gone about this because of the release schedule and then how slow it's been it's kind of taken the heat off it's hard to really market when there's three month gaps but I think this is going to be a sleeper trade paperback that people are going to read. They're going to fall in love with this series. I also still have high hopes for Dr. Manhattan and where this could go in the series. Today, issue number 10 came out. Um, so it'll be interesting to read where that's going to take the story. But um, yeah, so I can't argue with what Dan said because I think that we certainly haven't seen it take off from a speculation perspective and when the whole Watchmen thing was announced I think we all expected it too and uh, I definitely think scheduling has been the key it certainly hasn't been writing quality because that has not been what we've heard right we can be happy because number 10 came out today so there's that for us right so that brings us to the last pick on the cold list this week and we have comic book invest that comes in the spotlight writer Andy Tomlin. Hey, what's up, everybody? Andy here with Indie Spotlight Series. What's cold this week? I'm going to have to go with Antarctic Press as a whole. Uh, there was a time about six, seven months ago when Rags came out. Every Antarctic Press title after that was seeing heat, whether it be $10, 15 $20. It, they were all hot. Now, it's very, very hit and miss uh, with very few that are actually seeing uh, big numbers after release day. Uh, look at Jungle Comics. I would have thought that one would have drove hard out of the gate and, and done something, but not really anything. Oh man, that was, a, that was a cold one. So cold, look what it did to him. Put him out. <laughs> I think I could hear him snoring back there. <laughs> Antarctic Press, 
I think he has a legit reason for it to be on cold, all for the reasons he described, but I think we might see a turnaround in the near future because it's certain books that have been coming out. They got the new horror type books, but what do you think about his pick, Jack? Right. I, I agree with this pick. Um, today, uh, we see horror comics number one release that I think is going to do well, and I, I think will kind of hopefully change sort of the trend that we're seeing from Antarctic Press. Having said that, um, I think that he hit the nail on the head with what we've seen. I don't necessarily put Antarctic Press. I don't really fault them. I think no. that a lot of it's ebbs and flows of the market. I think um, and FOMO. We, right. We've talked and we talk, we talk about that on the Bolo Show where when a when a indie publisher has a title that pops off, there tends to be a belief or a fear that everything is going to pop off from that indie pop publisher going forward, and you need to jump on everything so people buy up copies. Demand dries up, but then so what ends up happening is it's the speculators holding your copies. It's not the true market, and we're all trying to sell them to each other. Values go down, and then we all get scared to make the next play. And that's where you start to see indie publishers like Antarctic Press start to go through these kind of depressive periods where they're releasing books, and a lot of them are good books, and then their readers are lo still loving them. And they're probably still doing good numbers from a sales perspective. But from a secondary market perspective, there's little to no action. And, um, you know, I also have to believe he brought up rags, that some of the negative publicity surrounding rags that happened during a period of time probably hurt and, and kind of residual fell into the lap of um, Antarctic Press because they were really hoping for that crossover event to be big for them with a few of their their different um, series like Hop and uh, Rags. Punchline. Punchline, and I, I don't think that that has has really gotten the the buzz that they had hoped. And I think that a lot of that had to do with the what happened with Rags. But I think they they moved through it. They've stayed the course, and um, I think that they have a good chance with horror comics to get a hit on their hands. And then you can just keep laying down again. That's all you got to do is because now once people see that hit, if they release another horror book, pe people are going to jump on it. And that's just the way the market tends to move. So we see some of these publishers that we're going to see on the hot list will then end up on the cold list. And some of these publishers we see on the cold list will probably then end up on the hot list at some point. Right. It's important to know that this list is week to week. Market moves in a week. And I, for one, am kind of, ex kind of excited about the horror comics. Thanks to see how it goes because it seems like they're trying to create a horror universe. So we'll see how that book is. But with that... That's going to wrap us up on the hot and cold so we can actually bring up the list for the week. And so there's the final list for May 29th, 2019 on the hot. Jack, do you want to summarize the list for us real quick? Sure, sure. Definitely. On the hot, we've got Fear Agent. Uh, let me start that over. <clears throat> sure, Brian. First off on the hot, we've got the series Fear Agent. Secondly... We're looking at IDW creator-owned properties. Third on the list, we've got convention commissions. Next on the list, we're looking at Batman the White Knight, especially the variants. Next up, Atlas Comics number one issues. Next on the list, we've got Archie Comics, especially those female-driven covers. Next up on the hot list, we've got Eternals, especially those variants. Look at that number one Akuna variant. And finally, we've got convention-exclusive toys from San Diego Comic-Con rounding out the hot list. Taking a look at the cold list, we start off with Lobo Comics. Next up, we move into Marvel's Netflix properties, especially those Defenders properties. Third on the list, we've got Doomsday Clock. Great series, tough on timing. And finally, we're looking at Antarctic Press, who's been on a bit of a cold streak lately, landing them on the cold list. There's the hot and cold list for this week. Now, if you're looking for what's hot in the actual comic issues, like what's first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz, then you definitely want to check Jack and I out Thursday nights at 9 p.m. right here on Simple Men's Comics because we recap all the hot releases and we go over Jack, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo's Bolo List. Isn't that right, Jack? Absolutely. Thursday nights is the main attraction live right here on Simple Men's Comics, 9 p.m. And we're talking everything new comics. And we're also taking a look back at last week to see what's going on in the market in that week's time. Right. We will be announcing tomorrow night the giveaway for Power Rangers number nine and Excellence number one one stop shop variant. And remember, Hot and Cold List is released exclusively every week 
on this video first before it gets put on other forms of social media. Jack, do you have anything you'd like to say? Oh, just thank you for joining us. And like Brian said, be sure to check out all the other great content right here on the Simple Ones Comics YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And make sure you hit that bell so you get those notifications whenever we drop new content. Because we're always coming up with something new. And you never know when there's going to be a new video from Simple Ones Comics YouTube channel. And with that, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow night on the CBSI Bolo Show.